Okay, everyone, good, after, good evening to you and thanks for coming. Uh, I think it's time we start now. So today we'll be, I wrote this um, a quick one on the screen. Uh, can you see the screen? Please, if you can see the screen, it'll be good. Uh, though there's a whiteboard uh, that I, I'm, I'm sharing. Um, so this is um, a practical tip uh, to learn Coreg, practical tip to learn Coreg. So it says, don't worry about the reason for learning Coreg word for word. Just learn it word for word as shown, not an approximation to them or your own version to them and all will be well. So um, I find that cheeky anyway. And, and I find it funny. I shared it on my LinkedIn as well some days back. So anyway, so I think we should go to what we have for today. What's happening? How am I? I don't know how to use this anymore now. Um, here, masters in front. Does anybody know what I'm going to do? Okay, yeah, this one, select. So today I want us to go, because we had this last week and I remember talking about TRSs and the uh, movement, but this is uh, basic as well, hair masses, um, fonts. So um, does anybody um, want to give us some background, anything, just uh, share with us your, knowledge, you know, your understanding of these two uh, subjects? today uh, hair masses and fronts in metrology anybody can unmute and just share with us i don't like to call names i might have to call names i might have to call names but i don't want to call names yet okay so let's let me try then um who is, who is, who is uh, hello um okay uh, my name is good evening everyone my name is um adela Efumbajo. hi adela uh, so the little i know the little i know about um emasis is um uh, we have different types and uh, generally emasis uh uh um large mass of air with um, same temperature and moisture and we have um, different we have different we have um, cold air masses and uh, we have warm air masses and also fronts uh, are like boundaries where two um, air masses meet like we have two air masses of different temperature and moistures meet so just like the name fronts like a wall front where two enemies meet, same thing with um, this front also, where two different type of MRCs meet. Um, that's the idea I have. All right, brilliant, brilliant, actually. I like that um, explanation. So MRC is, um, will I say, I think I might have to give somebody this um, control for the waiting room. But anyway, if it gets too much, I will do that. But for now, maybe I can manage. So. Um, it's simple and once you understand it as well as i always say once you understand how this thing works then it's it is a lot easier uh to 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 take it further so this class again i have to say it doesn't stop anybody <laughs> it doesn't replace your uh coc preparation in school this is just to make it easy and fun so that when you read it yourself you will enjoy it okay so air masses, again, um, like, like Adiola said, is correct. It's a body of air. Uh, and they can be as much as a mile or a couple hundred miles. So it's a body of air moving together. They have um, similar uh, temperature. Of course, that's why they move together. Uh, they have similar moisture. So it's like water vapor content is the same. So moisture, you can say water vapor vapor contents uh, and the pressure of of course is similar so they move like that together so the the interesting thing about hair mass is that where they originate from so let me write that down so where they originate from 
uh, will, is what they probably will be their name. So you can understand that hair mask can come from uh, land, can come from sea. So if it's sea, then we call it maritime. It can come from the poles. Uh, that would mean it's going to be very cold. So, so that would be like a, pol a polar one. Um, it can come from different parts anyway. Um, so it, it is it's just that understanding. Uh, so it can come from the equator. It can come from the Arctic. So you can see uh, polar hair mass, tropical hair mass. You can see that, yeah, like, like I just uh, mentioned. So, and also if it's, it can be warm, it can be cold. Uh, you see the W, you see the K, you see the M. Uh, maritime, you see the C, continental. And all, and all that. So that's hair mass. So it's very simple. Now, if we are going to war, you know, we go like a soldier. They say before war is before armed forces, right? So, you know, if you look at the old movies where you see people want to fight war with sword, when they used to use sword, the real people fighting. Um, it's interesting because they, they come together and they get to like a war front, you know, where they stay and somebody is charging this army or the army and someone's carrying the flag maybe they will wait and see if somebody's going to hoist the white flag say sorry uh, we're not fighting anymore so that's the font so you just imagine something coming from the pole like a polar hair mass it's going to be cold right you understand where it's coming we did that in the first class and something so another one coming from the equator it's going to be warm and they meet up somewhere that point at which they meet is called the front. Uh, so it's a boundary between two hair masses. Now, what will happen when these hair masses meet? Uh, it, something is going to give way. It depends. Maybe nothing will happen. They just meet and they just, uh, they just, you know, making, not really making an interaction. Uh, they just, because not, they're not, none of them is too more powerful than the other. So they're, they're just um, romancing each other. For, 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 so that's, that would be a stationary front. So just remember that. They just meet. They are not really having much interaction. Maybe the wind is not too strong. They are not really strong. They cannot fight each other. So that's stationary. So just imagine two hammies in, you know, close to each other but not fighting. That's stationary front. And that's how easy is it to, uh, to learn it. Now, if, for example, uh, one is winning the other, then that, that will be the name of the front. So if the warm front is winning the, um, the cold front, then it's going to be a warm... Uh, if the warm hair mass is winning the cold hair mass, that means it's going to be um, a warm front, if you understand what I mean. Um, if it, the cold hair mass is uh, winning... The warm hair mass is going to be cold. It's going to be cold front. And now let me explain that again. What do I mean by winning? So if the cold air mass gets to the point, of course, the the cold hair is much denser, heavier than the warm. So it will more or less like cut into it and push the warm hair mass up. Just you know, just to take over from that space. So just imagine. Uh, they are fighting this warm, the soldiers, this cold soldiers are fighting the, um, the, 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 the hot soldiers and they're just throwing them off and just penetrating them. So if you play draft, if you understand, or you play, no, I, I think I play draft, I don't play chess. So draft, and you're beginning to go into your enemy territory. So just imagine the cold, cold hair always goes below anyway. So that's a cold front. If it is the hot hair, that is winning ground in the it means suppressing uh, the cold, moving into the cold territory. They have a warm front, so that's the three. Now we have something called the occluded front. In this sense, it means um, they are really fighting. So you see the uh, you see it like um, the the cold is surrounding the warm. They are all inside each other, sort of. And that is called occluded front. So if you look at it from a war perspective, sorry, we, 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 pray for, we don't want like war, we like peace. But if you look at it from a war perspective, you can really understand this uh, very easily. Uh, so as I said, where they originate from, um, 
gets their they get their names. Um, let me let me write that down for anybody checking. Names from where they originate from. So that could be polar, it could be Arctic, polar, it could be Arctic, it could be um, my, um, cont maybe equatorial, and you know, like that. And sometimes you see these, the cold, you see the, um, no, that's gonna be cold, be warm, or you see these uh, maritime, you see, um continental so for, again you can see something like uh, um polar maritime you know something like that so it's come through the water it's cold it's come through the water as well so england for example is a very interesting uh concept because because it's an island nation you get to get everything so sometimes coming from the sahara that's hot you can see that sometimes coming from the arctic so we feel everything we we have to feel everything. So the fonts is, again, um, I just use the military strategy to explain it. And I think if it is what it is, it is, I, I, I don't think you get it wrong if you use that to say, this is what I understand it like. Um, also don't forget the shapes. So code, it will be blue. Uh, if you look at your freezers at home, they try to use blue, blue waters or something. So the triangle, blue, if you look at the warm, it's red. So just imagine you see half of the sun, the sun is hot. So half of the sun is that shape. Uh, so that's um, warm, uh, you know, something like that. When you see the old cool dead front, so you see it, it looks like um, the cold is is hiding the the, the, the the warm inside it and it then sees like purple and stationary fronts so they're not interacting they're just there you know so you see the the cold the warm the cold the warm so they are just at that boundary um and i think that's um really really basic for it you know once you get this as well it will help you to put everything we've talked about the trs into perspective so um that is that. Any question on this? And does anybody have any question on this? Brief, a brief question, please. Anybody with a brief question, you can raise up your hand if you have a question on this. Okay. Um, next, we will be talking about. I know I gave assignment on the TRS movement of TRS. I did not see the answers in the in the group. And uh, guess what, guess what? I will not answer it today as well. So it's still up to you. The stages of the TRS, the movement of TRS in the hemispheres in the north and the south uh, is still there for us to research and the recommended travel route. So if you are in a TRS or ahead of the TRS or behind the TRS or in the port side or the starboard side, you are in the, um, the zones, what are they called? So look for this, look for this diagram and you know, find this so let me write that out again it is um i think i'm going to be having a child attack again you know very soon but anyway it's all good so so this assignment please don't forget it it is very important Metrology, yeah? metrology assignment. So this is assignment for metrology, and please let us try to 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 get them sorted and put their the answers in the group. If you there's no if you make a mistake, then there's no problem. Thank you very much. See you later. All right. So um, Captain Afolabi, I don't know if you're ready for us today uh, to mention about this. Um, the unload offload. If you are ready, you can have the floor. I will mute myself. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, I don't know if you can hear me loud and clear. Yeah, okay. Um, we're just going to be discussing about the, the offload release. And um, we just first need to know that there are two systems and um, so for the offload release, this is um, an operation and it's 
is the normal way of launching a lifeboat and it's this is a situation where the lifeboat is already fully launched in the water so when we are launching a lifeboat especially during um, a man overboard drill or um, even in an emergency where we need to evacuate is it how we bring we launch it with the two systems is it how we launch it with the off load release and uh, with the onload, onload release. The onload release itself is another system which is uh, being advised that we should do so only in emergency, which is one of the questions from the surveyors. So for the offload release, where I'm going to start from, I'll start by saying that this is um, the, this operation is like the normal method of launch and release and it's conducted when the lifeboat is fully waterborne so when the lifeboat is fully waterborne before we can call this an offload release so how do we go about this it's um first step you have to of course like i said allow the vessel i mean the boat to the lifeboat to be fully in the water then two then we crack up our engines these are procedures because sometimes the surveyors might be able to actually um, try in orals, how do you carry out an offload release? So we start by saying the the lifeboat is fully water after you've carried out your risk assessment, but if it's um, during an emergency, it's a dynamic risk assessment. Lifeboat is fully in water, your engines are carved up, ready, tested, and then all crew are seated with their seat, uh, with their seat belt um fasting and then you know okay you are now ready to leave um the vessel maybe the vessel is in distress or it's just like uh, an emergency drill then we have to now pull out the release angle of the safety pin because there's a release angle and there is a safety pin which according to the ms i mean when 676 we also need to be taking care i mean we also need to note of the safety pin on the release um, handle so after our paper has, sit, uh, has been seated down uh, all sit best fasting we pull out the release handle of the safety pin and then we pull out the release handle to fully open position itself by one and by one action so once this is open like i said the vessel has to be fully waterborne for this to be for offload release system to be in operational and when this has happened then the two locks will be uh, released from the boat and then we can sail the boats away but in some situations where we go through all this process we'll find out that when we <laughs> when we are about to release the uh, the boats and the boat is fully um, waterborne the release system is not operating. And this happens if, especially one, the vessel, you might think the vessel is, I mean, I mean, the boat is fully waterborne, but because of the wave, you will not really get the boat number one to be fully waterborne. Or two, the release system might be having a fault at the dying minute. That is when we now move to our onload, onload release. So what is an onload release? An onload release is an operation that is conducted when the um, live boat is not fully waterborne. And it's always recommended that this should be done in uh, an emergency case. But also when it's being done, you have to bring the live boat very close to the water because you do not want to operate an off, I mean, onload release when the live boat is close to three to four meter of the water. So how do we carry out this one as well? First of all, like I said, we have to ensure that the lifeboat is as close to the water surface as much as we can. Of course, the engine has been cracked up and you've tested and you're sure you're ready to go. And like the um, offload, the crew are seated and well, um, and with their seat belts well secured. Then now we come again down to the safety pin. And the reason why I like stressing this safety pin is because of experience from uh, from some ships. They always try to stress out on you mentioning safety pins uh, when you're answering a lifeboat uh, questions, especially in orals. 
They will pull out the release handle of the, of the safety pin. They will open the hydrostatic interlock cover. So it will not go by, um, by hydrostatic release again. It will be going by you doing it yourself. Then we lift the hydrostatic interlock cover fully and we hold it. And then that is the time that we release the handle to fully open just with one, uh, with one action. Like I said, the onload release, it's not the standard way, but it is recommended to be carried out, especially when you really need to disembark the, I mean, disengage from the vessel if, if it's an emergency, but you should do it, number one, just with, uh, with caution, and two, when the vessel is really very close to the water. So the normal way I do try to remember offload, onload, how will I not get confused? How will I get confused about onload, offload? Is for the offload, there is no load on it. The, 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 the boat is fully seated, I mean, fully afloat on the water. So there is no tension on, on the while holding it. And that is when they are the static units. The, the way they are the static um, system helps in it is the buoyancy that pulls, pushes it up gets to a point and it opens it up for you, especially when you open your, your liver. But the offload, I mean the, the onload is a system at which you are still on the load, I mean you are still so being supported and then you are opening and um, releasing the, the release handle. So that makes it more heavy and that makes it a little bit uh, more strategic and more a little bit dangerous, which is being advised that you should do it when uh, when in emergency or when you really need to kick start, get out, or when the offload release is not uh, is not working properly. So in summary of it all, the first thing first that should come to your mind when you are um, using a lifeboat, uh, especially in drills or in emergency is we need to first think of the offload offload release but if in any case that you need to act very fast the offload release is not um, is not fully functional then we go to the onload release and the onload release works for everyone but it, it's something also that someone and we are being advised to first go through the offload and through the uh, through the onload I hope that has been able to clarify the difference between onload and offload. Thank you, boss. Thank you. So um, I just want to share that, again, uh, like of, um, Captain Falabi said, the onload is really in an emergency. Please don't do it if it's not. Uh, if you've tried to um, use this speed boats from when you're going to Lagos outside bar, I have, and um, you need to be strategic on where you sit, you know. Um, in the early days, I don't know, or people that don't know, they're the ones that run to the front, you know, the teeth. And when you get into the waves, you can imagine how it slams. Uh, yes, so, you know, it's very painful. So just imagine the whole boat, like your rescue boat or your lifeboat dropping uh, two, three meters. And if you, as an officer, you're responsible. Imagine people's back, you know, and all that. So you want to be as close to the water as possible. Yeah, sometimes you want to use the offload, but the waves, again, as I said. So please, please, please don't mix it up and know that it is very important. Caution, caution, caution. Um, okay. Thank you very much, Captain, for that. Um, I hope if anybody has a question on this, you can put it in the chat. I, I don't know where the chat is at the moment, but I, I don't think we have any chat. Or you raise your hand, okay? I want us to move um, to the next one, which is the interesting bit. Everybody has been waiting for this, I know. Um, I think everybody's been waiting. Or am I the only one waiting for it? Yeah. So, who is going to be our? Uh, oh, Michael, please. Ask, you can ask. What's the question? Unmute yourself, and you can ask your question. Uh, good evening. Good evening, Captain. sir. Good evening to you. Yes, sir. Good evening, Captain Afolabi. I greet everybody online. Uh, my question is regarding the launching of uh, 
like, but because I noticed some vessels, they used to, some vessels have the habit of launching maybe with a crew, one crew on board. So I don't know if there is a regulation that support that, but according to the onload that the onload release system that the captain explained, are they, I want to know the crew, are they going to be on the, on the lifeboat for the onload release? I just need clarification if crew are supposed to be on the lifeboat during the launching or they are to use the normal embarkation ladder. Um, Captain Falabdi, you want to answer that or do you want me to take it? The, yeah, I... Yeah, for the first uh, question, whether the crew will be on the vessel, it's been recommended that in as much as possible as you can, the lifeboat should be launched before the crew starts boarding. But there are some vessels uh, that do also recommend that at least there should be one personnel will be inside the uh, the boat. I mean, the, the live boat itself. But as per as per NGN, uh, we should not launch the live boat without. I mean, with the crew on board. So you, the safe practice will be to launch the live boat down to the embarkation point, then get the crew safely or the crew and the passengers, in this case, safely into the lifeboat, have them strapped up, and then we um, be able to carry out um, orders. But when we're talking of real, real I mean, emergency situations, sometimes it looks impossible practically, and that's why there have been many reviews, and now we have um, vessels practically that do have their embarkation point right from, um, right from, I mean, right from the vessel. You do not need to go down, especially for a free fall lifeboat. The free fall lifeboat itself does not have, uh, mostly does not have the capacity for you to launch the free fall lifeboat and before you be able to start getting your crew on board. But in this case here, we have to get them in, strap them up, then we, we launch that for the, uh, especially for the free for life. Now coming back to the onload, to be, to be, um, the onload itself is totally different from this because the onload itself is, um, is a system at which you can launch the vest, you can launch the, the lifeboats it's maybe two or three meters in um, close to the water. And then you can release it and bring the lifeboat back to the vessel. But if you practically look at it during tough weather, and when I said it's during an emergency situation where there's fire, um, some also still recommend you still carry out your crew and, put, and allow your crew to be on the, on the boat and, and, and launch. But it is not um, really highly recommended. Thanks, boss. Uh, thanks, Michael, for the question. So a quick one on the free fall. So I, I, I have maybe next, um, next class, I will show you the video of a free fall live boat, uh, which uh, on my vessel, one of my last vessels, I did not join because I just got married. So I told them I'm not, I'm not joining <laughs> anyway uh, at that time. So I, that was my excuse. But on the free fall, everybody was going to be on board before you launch it. And even when we were testing it, we had at least five or six on it. So yes. Um, now also, please go to back to your SMS. It's important. What does a, um, your company say? What is the requirement of the boat, uh, the builders as well? So don't just use what you learned on one ship, on your, another ship. Check what is written there. What is the procedure? on your own ship, you understand what I mean? So maybe one person or maybe two, just in case something happens or whatever. So you have to put that in mind. But thanks for the question anyway, Michael. All right, any questions again, just go um, raise your hands in this platform, then we'll be able to call you up. So I'm going to the next one, which is the interesting one. I think I should, I'm going to stop the screen sharing and go to the next one.
And I think this is the one everybody has been waiting for. Um, so how do I go to screen share again? Share screen. Okay, so this is it. Um, is there going to, I, can you see my screen? What can you see on my screen, please, if you can? Um, okay, so let me call, let me call someone, or who's going to volunteer? If you can see my screen, I need to know if my screen is there. Yeah, um, that's what you're saying, say what I'm and uh, save watermark and then uh, we do an A, we do an B, then they didn't be stopped. Then they isolated the entire mark. And then uh, uh, this other thing, this, this could be a top mark. And then a special mark. And then, um, yeah, that's all. So talk me through how you will navigate your vessel from this point to this point you then so what i want to know is what you're saying if you can help let me know everything about that boy what side of the boy will you pass you know and um yeah something let's 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 get into it okay um at this point from the same watermark if from the same watermark if i'm if i'm going to the open ocean Okay, I'm coming from the same watermark to the to the special mark. So, so from the same watermark, I am oh, I'm lost. Please, you're lost. Why are you lost? What happened? Um, I'm getting confused on how to navigate through the red, green, red. No, you before you get to the green, red. Let's talk. Let we are here. You are where my cursor is. So let's start from this one. So where are you passing? And, and what is this? What is the, uh, tell me characteristics of it and the lights, everything you remember about it. Uh, I can't remember the lights. Okay. I can't remember the lights right now. So what's the name? That's a, that's a fair way. Yes, that's a fair way, but. So, okay. So where will you pass? At this point, I can I can pass through the port or I just need to give a distance. I can pass through the port or the starboard side of the board. Why? I why, why can you pass through that port or starboard? Okay, the boy indicates that the the boy indicates that I have a safe passage around it. Okay. So I, that's just my reason. Okay, so, right, okay, let's go. So where will you pass? Make a decision. Okay, at this point, I will pass by, I will use my starboard. So you, you will keep it on your starboard. So you come this way. Are you, is this, is this correct? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you come this way, right? Yes, I'll come okay. that way. All right, so now this is in front of you. What is next? What is next is the... Um, is the... Uh, how is this called? This other... Uh, this other board that is indicating the regions. <laughs> <laughs> All right, if anybody else wants to volunteer, just raise up your hand. You're here to learn anyway. So anybody else... Uh, because now voyage, I have to say this, eh? I dropped the, the syllabus voyage. If you fail voyage, if you pass everything else in your orals and you fail, fail voyage only, it's a fail because you understand, uh, you don't want to take the ship aground, right? And you have only one opportunity to go. So. Oh, uh, okay. The, uh, first boy is, um, like you said, uh, a safe watermark, which is um, commonly known as fairway boy. Okay. The second one is uh, <clears throat> a preferred channel boy. Third okay. one is isolated danger. The fourth one is a top mark of a uh, top mark of a starboard boy. That's a lateral mark. Okay. And the 
fourth, the fifth one is um is a special boy. So okay, pause, um, pause, pause, fail, fail here to learn anyway. So anybody else? Uh, because now voyage, I have to say this. Eh? I dropped the the syllabus. Voyage. If you fail voyage, if you pass everything else in your orals and you fail fail voyage only, it's a fail because you understand uh, you don't want to take the ship aground, right? And you have only one opportunity to go. So, uh, okay. The uh, first boy is um, like you said. Uh, a safe water mark, which is um, commonly known as fairway boy. Okay. The second one is uh, <clears throat> a preferred channel boy. Third yeah. one is isolated danger. The fourth one is a top mark of uh, top mark of a starboard boy. That's a lateral mark. Okay. And the fourth, the fifth one is um, is a special boy. So. Okay, pause, um, pause, pause, fail, fail. So run me through it. Uh, okay, first of all, uh, the first one is a uh, is a safe water mark, safe water boy, which indicates that the surrounding water uh, ahead is a uh, is safe around it. Then the second one is a preferred channel, preferred channel to starboard. So whenever I see this uh, preferred channel, I know that the preferred channel is to my starboard side on the region A. On region A, then the the the, the other one, two boy, two uh, to the top mark with uh, two black balls is an isolated danger. Uh, is used to indicate uh, maybe a wreck or a danger around uh, somewhere. So, where, so where, where, can uh, you pass? Uh, where can you pass in this one? Which side? Uh, on this one, uh, <laughs> I don't really know. Okay, okay, next, <laughs> no, no, next. I don't have next, a idea of where okay, to pass. Okay, next, next one. Yeah. Then the next one is a is a lateral boy, is a lateral boy on the and is the 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 starboard. Okay. The starboard, the lateral boy. And the next one. And the lastly, the that one is a special mark. Is used to indicate maybe uh just for a special activity that is going on somewhere. So you can use that one as as a as a boy to indicate. Okay. Thank you very much, Phil. 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 Okay, so like like they all said, the safe water mark indicates that uh, all around the boy there's navigable water, mm-hmm. and then so it can isolate or caught in long flashes of ten seconds. For the isolated danger mark, which is the red and the black, flashes two seconds. Mm-hmm. And is there a reason? And then the next, the, the next one. Where are you? Where are you starting from? You starting from here or you are starting from here? I just okay. I'm to... starting from from up. Okay. So yeah. The Safe next... water mark. Then okay. The, the, the second one is the prefer, uh, preferred mark, which is port side. In the case of port side. Okay. Then the then next I... the next one is. Uh, this is the starboard. Top, uh, the top mark. Okay, and the next one is special mark. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Fail as a fail. Come back again in three months. <laughs> yes, uh, Cap. I want to try. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, Cap. Good evening. Evening. Uh, yeah, the first one, eh, which is the farewell, farewell boy. Okay. Mark. Uh, <clears throat> normally, if you're entering, if you're inbound or outbound, if you're inbound, you keep the fairway uh, boil by your port side. Okay. By your port side, yeah. Then, uh, <clears throat> as you proceed, uh, <clears throat> so you're coming, you see your, you are coming this way, right? You're coming this way. Yeah, inbound. Yeah. Okay, inbound, yeah. 
then yeah. you're here what next then <clears throat> when you're there then uh, the uh, the markings that uh, identify the starboard and the port side uh, channel so what is this then one? you That one, I cannot remember that one. <laughs> fail, fail, fail. <laughs> so, okay, guys, uh, what is your... So I think it's preferred channel to starboard. What, what, what ILA region is this one? A. <laughs> it's preferred A. channel to port, I think. Is, re is region A. Is it region A or region B? It's region A. So, it's okay, what about this one? What about this one? What region is this? Uh, <laughs> I think I'm mixing it up. What region is this one? This um this is a oh okay. Ah. This is a this, this is a cone of um this is a cone of green states region B. <laughs> and this is what? That's region A, preferred channel to ports. Are you sure it's region A? Are you sure? I just, you know, you can, you might be right, but if you're not sure, then what's the point? So are you sure it's region A or region B? I guess everybody's now going online and quickly checking it out. And well, um, uh, <laughs> that's a cone of... Um, Green cone is region B. Green cone is region B. And red is what? Red triangle is what? Red is that, is that, no, ah, that, yeah, that's, wait, wait, wait. That's a green can. That's not a green cone. That's yeah, a so green, can. green can is region B. And red cone is what? Red cone is... Um, red cone is region A. Region, red cone... Yeah. Mm. Red cone is region B as well. No. Oh. <laughs> I like this actually. Uh, it's quite interesting. Uh, but I would say that uh, don't forget if you if you fail if you fail voyage you are going to uh, you failed. So we have the can and the cone, uh, and this is very simple. We shouldn't be making these mistakes at this point in time. Uh, my special friend, um, Pilot, would you like to speak and clarify if you're still there? No, gone. All right. So you can, you can check it out on Google yourself, and you'll see that where you're making the mistake. So one. Um, except the examiner is really, really wrong, but I doubt they will put two separate regions in the same uh, exam for you because it doesn't make sense. You are either in one region or the other. So most times it's going to be the same region. Uh, I know that green, <laughs> green corn is region A, red corn is region B. Uh, green can, this um, my mouse is on, is region B, and the red can is region A. So if you're going into a net port, what do you see? What are the top marks that you see? So again, uh, it shows that we have some gaps we need to fill, and we should go back and check it. So this is how we used to do it when I was a cadet, and even up to when I went for class one, because you'll be doing rules of the road, and you'll be doing voyage all through. Uh, class three, class two, class one, you do everything. So we, we actually, you know, th there are flip cards you can buy or you can actually draw it yourself. I, again, as I said, um, the more senses you apply when you're learning, the better. So if you draw it yourself, it will stay longer because you you know, you put time in it. So when you draw it in a uh, piece of paper, some people draw it in as much as a big uh, A4 paper and they laminate it. So when we have that, we go to the bar or something, we put it on the floor. Of course, it's a school bar, so they, they are used to it. They don't, they, don't, you know, they don't get pissed off. And we put it on the floor, and we, I'm, I'm not joking, 
people will carry their beer in their hands and they will pretend like they are the ship and they will navigate it on the floor. So it's okay, this is this boy and everything about the boy, I will keep it to this side. And next one, and next one, and next one. Again, it's about repetition. It's like you're playing a piano or you're playing a guitar or you're playing any musical instrument as well or you, you know, you're trying to ask a lady out as well. You know, you have to get better at doing these things, you know, <laughs> practice, practice, practice. So please, please, please don't just think, um, yeah, I know it. Go and practice. Unfortunately, in our shows, especially like, you know, we don't really have so much varieties of boys. Unlike, you know, if you go to some other countries where you see the lateral marks properly, you see everything. So yes, I will be doing a mix of these things. Every class will be talking about boyage. Some of them will just be maybe the boy and tell me everything about the boy. Uh, some of them will be a, a, in this form whereby we will navigate through it, okay? But please, there's no excuse not to know the name. There's no excuse not to know the lights, the shapes, the characteristics, please. These are exams and you have to do it. You have to learn it and know it. And if you fail on the boy, every voyage, everything is down. It's just gone. No, so, no sorry, because it means the ship is going to go. And, you know, the prices of the ships are not cheap. We don't want people that would take ships aground, okay? And if you are the captain, so your orals is like you're going for a job interview. The examiner has to be comfortable to employ you on their ship so that they can go to bed without sleeping, you know, with their life jackets. <laughs> so if you're telling me this boy, I will be concerned, you know, <laughs> to keep you on watch by yourself. So, you know, a few things. Um, those that, that that's important so please guys i didn't mean to show this to trick anybody out but just to show that there are gaps and we need to fill these gaps okay so yep yeah. and uh, thanks for everybody that attempted to answer uh the question and um i think i have one more thing because again we are we are almost finished for the day except anybody has a particular question you can please ask again now um, while we are at the voyage, um, there's something I would like us to talk about is on the, uh, the light. So if last, my last trip was to South Korea uh, with some of the people in this house, you know, and on getting to South Korea, uh, part of uh, Busan, I think, yeah, part of Busan. So we saw leading lights, you know, um, uh, you know, and all those, the voyage system was great and everything was nice. So if you look at the light and you look at your charts, you see things written on the chart. What are those things? You see range, you see this, you see some um, characteristics of the light written on the charts. So please, we need to know what that means. Uh, so the range written on the chart, what is it? Is it the geographical range? Is it the nominal range? What is geographical range What of a light? What is the nominal range of the light? Which one will you see on the chart? Um, what does it mean to you? If you don't see that information, where else can you look for it? You know, for those information. That's professionalism, I used to say as well. So I cannot find on the chart. Where will you find it? You know, the captain is looking at it and saying, this light, how far are we supposed to see these lights? And you say, yeah, it's supposed to be on the chart. Okay, it's not there. Then where? So that's where all your list of lights, your nautical almanac, can come, you know, those things that we open and read every time, your list of lights. Remember when you used to open it and use it every time? No, joke, joke. People don't. I know. So, yes. So we need to know what's the difference between nominal range and geographical range. Now, when you talk about um, um, an object are in, ra in range, light or boy systems are in range, what does it mean, you know? Those things are not cool terms that will show you confidence. So you can go for your orals and the examiner puts out a chart in front of you and say, okay, you are in range or you are in range of this. You want to navigate yourself so that you are in range of social objects, you know, two, three objects so that you can have safe access to port. Like my officers that we went to South Korea together, we were using the, um, the green light. I cannot remember the name of the light exactly. But once you're in range of that light, you are safely entering the port. If you are not in range, you are probably going to eat the shores or go aground. 
So yes, now what is leading like leading lines? You know, all those little technologies. Please, 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 if you have an old chart on your ship, yeah, just keep one and try and keep one in your cabin. You know, when you cannot sleep at night, you're thinking about your girlfriend or something, just open the chart and just try and look at those little, little details. Uh, that's the difference between um, the L and the T is those dots, you know, the I and, you know. So let's, let us um, build on that as well. Any question, please? We are rounding off the class for today. And if, again, if you have anything in particular you would like us to discuss for next class, ask before the next class so that somebody else can pick it up. And again, if somebody in this audience also feels like they've learned something, you want to handle the next class, trust me, I don't mind. We will listen to you. Captain Busai is here, Captain Oliver is here. We will listen, we will guide you through where we think there's a mistake or if they're not using the right technologies, okay? Should we do one um, um, situation, uh, rules of road situation before we close? Anybody thinks we should do one before we close today? Rules of the road situation before we close? Joshua is saying yes. Okay, no problem. All right, uh, let me, let me, let me. Yes, sir. All right, so you have, um, you are on the bridge on a lone watch by yourself and you have seen this um, vessel, she's on your port bow, she's on your port bow. What action will you take? She's on my port bow. That's correct. Oh, I think that uh, that should be a crossing situation. Okay, you think it's a crossing situation? Well, how do you identify as a crossing situation? How do you know it's a crossing situation? Okay, so let me be sure. She's on my port bow, right? Yeah. Well, it depends on what which of her lights I'm seeing. If I'm seeing her, okay. So uh, you see, like, yeah, she could probably be on anchor. Let me tell you a joke. Let me tell you guys a joke. All right. I was called around five o'clock in the morning. Uh, one time I was at sea. It's a joke, but it really happened. And the officer called me and said, ah, "Captain, I have a situation on the bridge, and I, I don't mind. Call me. Yeah? That's why I'm being paid." And I got to the bridge. And I said, what's happening? He said, oh, he saw a lot of vessels ahead of him and he doesn't know what to do. I was like, okay, that's fine. So I went to the radar. I saw the range of the radar was about 48 miles or something like that, you know? And I looked at it and I said, it didn't, the officer did not acquire any vessel at all. He just saw them at 48 miles, a lot of vessels, and he was scared and he called me up. And guess what? Those vessels were at anchor. It's an anchorage. The ship was moving about seven knots. The closest vessel to us is about maybe 20 miles or so. We will sail for three hours before we touch any of the vessels at all. And it's calling me 5, 4.30, 5 o'clock in the morning to come and do what? So what I, why I brought that up is because, please, you have the objects there. You have the radar there. You have your radar plotting shit. Just acquire it. Know what it's doing. So I've given you a uh, vessel now. and just said it's on your port bar. You said it's crossing. Who told you it's crossing? Why, why, why is it crossing? What have you done to ascertain if it's crossing? So those are the things that I would like you to know. I know, yeah, you know, maybe, uh, so you need to ask me those questions so that I'm sure you actually understand. You say, oh, yes, I will take series of compass bearings to understand what she's doing. I will not assume 7C assumption shall not be made on the basis of scanty information. I give me, uh, give me a scanty information and you've lashed on this county information to give me answer. So that is on its own wrong. You understand what I mean? And this is for everybody to, to say that, ask me, ask me the question and say, oh, what, um, what, is, what is the vessel doing? Um, I would like to take suit of compass bearing to ascertain risks of collision exists to know what she's actually doing. So, so you have a vessel on your port bow, action. Like you said, uh, I have no, 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 not, not like I said. Okay, like answer. you corrected, I'm not going to work on scan radar information, of course. So, if I'm going to check, check the take different bearings, 
and then information acquired from my radar to the stay. Okay, so you are. And then if it's visual and I can see the light, and then I can I know what nature of what all right so yes you've taken this object this is fine and your bearing is steady and the range is closing action sorry i didn't hear that the bearing is steady the range is closing i'm going to alter my course to stop you're going to alter your course to starboard which part of the rule makes you alter your course to starboard Why, uh, why are you altering your course to starboard? What does, the uh, rule, the, what does the rule say? Uh, which of the rules? Yes, and uh, which of the rules? It's your, own, it's your own orals, not mine. I've done mine. I've done mine. It's yours. Okay, so let's start, let's try someone else. Th thanks for trying. So no worries. See, let, let me tell you guys something. Eh? Let me tell you something. Even when I was when I went for my class one, when they asking everybody questions, I will know the answer. When they ask my own, I will just forget. So don't worry. It's not a problem that you don't know the answer. All right. <laughs> when they ask everybody, I know the answers to everybody's questions. But when it's my own turn, I will just freeze. I will just forget. I will be saying what is not. So let me action. So let's move on. Let's move on. Action, action, quickly. Okay, uh, Captain. At that point, I think I will just um, reduce my speed. You will reduce. Then speed. check uh, after taking. Yeah, after taking the, the my compass bearing, then I will reduce my speed. Why? Why? Why do you want to reduce your speed? If the compass bearing is steady, if it shows that the vessel is uh, coming close to me. Then I have to reduce my speed and uh, alter my course to avoid the collision. Okay, what rule are you following, sir? Captain, I can't, I can't remember the, the, the rules now. <laughs> okay, that's good. Not a problem. <laughs> not, a, <laughs> not a problem. That's fine. It's all right. Uh, it just means we still need to do more of the rules. Um, let's go. So you have this vessel on your port side. Answer. Yeah. At, uh, I have it on my port side. Uh, first of all, I will, uh, after acquiring, I will reduce my speed. And uh, I think uh, uh, CAP is a rotating uh, situation. And I will have to overtake. Overtake. Okay. That's, uh, that's, your, that's fine, but uh, that's not the right answer. All right. Let, let me just make my own contributions. Good evening, all. Good evening. Can you hear me? Okay, I I will follow rule seven and follow with rule eight, and we talk about um, um action to take to avoid them um, collision. You know, rule seven is risk of collision. Now, I have certain risk of collision by taking my compass bearing. Okay. Rule eight um, says that any action at all that can be taken to avoid collision should be taken. So, moving to starboard, reducing my speed, or whatever, anything I can do to avoid collision is what I'm going to take. Okay, that's fine. Thank you very much, but that's not the answer I'm looking for, and that will not be a stop. Um, first of all, I will apply with five, with seven, and eight. But before then, after I guess, take the bearings, and also I will call the vessel to know our intentions. Okay, okay. Um, pause, 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 pause. Um, if you have noticed, if you've read my... No, 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 no. If you've made my OOW, um, I, I think I put my OOW there. I almost failed because of this. I understand that in our waters, we call or I say, hey, what's your intention? Please, that is not part of the rules, okay? Don't go to phone calls. Don't do that. In the United States of A, they like phone calls. They call each other and talk and talk. But please don't mention these at all during your orals that you're going to call it's a fail com com completely all right There's, the rules does not say you should call so guys let me let me give you a brief i've told you this situation yes uh, i'm going to take series of compass bearing as a state uh, risk of collision exists i've told you yes the compass bearing is steady and the range is closing what does that tell you it automatically tells you that you know there's risk of collision as according to rule okay yeah, we'll find out. 
Now, what do you do? You are, are you the give way or are you the standard? Those are the, that's the next thing you have to think about. Are you the give way vessel or are you the stand on vessel according to the rules? If you are the give way vessel, you give way. If you are the stand on vessel, you stand on. Now, she's on your port side. She's seeing your red lights. You're seeing her green lights. Are you give way or stand on? If you can answer that question. I think we are the give, we are the stand on vessel. The stand on vessel because you the you're not going to be seeing your, your port side. Green, has that means I'm being... green means go. Red means stop, right? In a way. So when you're seeing the green, it means you can go. When she's seeing your red, it means she should stop. So yes, you are the stand on vessel. What do you do when you are the stand on vessel in this situation? And what is the rule for stand on? And what's the rule? What rule do you follow? Okay, there's some silence in the house. Okay, guys, so um, I think we're going to stop here. We're going to stop here. I want us to go and um, think about this properly. We, there's a lot of gaps, I have to say, to be honest, on the rules of the road. Uh, port side, starboard side, stand on, give way. There's a lot of gaps, right? So it's not something we're going to solve now, 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 but we need to keep... Um, uh, we need to keep at it and realize that we need to learn on this. So this situation, please, before next week, let us try and find the answer to this in the group. Somebody should come up with a solid answer, please. Type your answer and we'll be able to see if it's right or wrong. If I don't pick it up, Captain Musa will pick it up. Captain Oliver might pick it up. Okay. So I'd like us to round up or else we will take uh, longer again. Um, Thank you, everybody, for coming. i like to mention everybody's name. Akonji, thanks for coming. Captain Busaya, again, thanks. Cheche, Chinedu, Efubajo, Fine Face, uh, Jimo, Joshua, Michael, Rabiu. Thanks for coming. Rabiu, you should be on the outset next week. Anyway, we're going to call you out. Uh, Officer Kibukola, thank you for coming. Olua Tobi, thanks for coming. Pina, uh, we, didn't, we didn't hear your voice today. Um, maybe next week, we're going to put you on the hot seat as well. Red me, all right, thank you for coming. And all the techno, technos, techno, technos, and the Yunusa, thank you for coming. Moses Eni, thank you for coming today. So I hope it's been an interesting time today. Um, please, 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 this is, we need to just keep, keep KMF, it's called KMF, keep moving forward, okay? So that we can get better as we go. Pena, don't worry, next week, eh? just, just get ready. <laughs> Thank you very much, guys, and I hope you enjoyed your beer during the whole per period today. Thank you. Thank you, Tab. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Tab, for your time. We really appreciate your effort. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Cap. Thank you, boss. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. And thank you, Captain. Um, Busayo, thank you also for coming. All right. Thank you, guys. See you in the class. See you in the chat room. See you next week. Nepa, don't take light, though. Where am I going to stop this?